Hi, I'm Mike Auerbach, Editor-in-Chief of American Pharmaceutical Review Magazine here at the AAPS show. I'm in the uh, JRS Pharma booth talking with uh, Tony Carpenzano. He's the company's Director of Research and Development. Tony, thanks so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Tony, the um, formulation guide talks about using two disintegrants. Can you tell us why? Sure, sure. Primarily, um, if you're doing uh, a granulation product where you take your uh, powdered drug and you compress it or, or densify it for granulation, you're creating granules so that that material will flow into a tablet press. Mm -hmm. In order to help disintegrate those granules and ultimately, uh, well, disintegrate the tablet first and then the granules as well, you can put a disintegrant in the external phase of, those, of that tablet and put another type disintegrant in the uh, granules themselves. There are two types uh, two modes of disintegration for disintegrants. Okay. One is by swelling and one is by wicking. A suggestion that we put into this formulation guide is to, in the external phase, in the tablet itself, to put a wicking type disintegrant so that it would draw water into the tablet. For the granules themselves, put a swelling type disintegrant so that once the water is drawn into the tablet and it contacts the granules, the disintegrant within the granules swells and breaks up the granules, liberating the drug. Tony, why is magnesium stearate suggested as a lubricant in only some examples? Well, that's a good question. Um, magnesium stearate is really the gold standard lubricant. It's used widely throughout the industry, both in the Nutra industry and the pharma industry. It's an extremely effective lubricant. The drawback with magnesium stearate is that it is insoluble and it tends to waterproof whatever it con comes in contact with. Mm -hmm. so that. Um, in the process of incorporating the lubricant into a formulation, it is blended, but it's blended for a very short period of time, typically. And it's not blended, maybe not so uniformly throughout the blend. That said, it still is an, a very effective lubricant, but um, if it's not used carefully, it can actually cause detrimental effects to the tablet itself. It can reduce the binding of the tablet under compression. It can also reduce the dissolution of the drug. So in the formulation guide, we talk about using mag stearate in certain uh, examples, only where uh, you have a high solubility drug and uh, you're not going to impact that solubility by using magnesium stearate. In the cases where you have a poorly soluble drug that is in there at a high dose or even at a low dose, um, you don't want anything in the formulation to impact the dissolution of that drug so it's made bioavailable to the body. So we recommend a, um, a lubricant called sodium stearyl fumarate, which has a little bit of water solubility, has a higher melting point than magnesium stearate, and because of that, it has less impact on the dissolution of the drug from the tablet. Tony, JRS has selected four parameters for uh, APIs. Can you tell us about those four parameters and, and why you've selected those and if there are any other um, factors to consider? Sure. Sure. Well, we selected four parameters. Initially, when this guide was put together, there were two parameters selected, and that was uh, drug dose level in the tablet, because you know you have to consider how much drug is going to be in a tablet, how much of that tablet is going to be drug. And the other portion was solubility of the, of the drug itself. So those, you know, looking back in my career, I, I think those were the two main drivers of what parameters that I would look at first when formulating a tablet. We expanded the guide to include the compactability of the drug, because of course making tablets you need something that's going to compress, and the flowability of the, the drug. As I mentioned before, flow of the granulation of the blend before it's compressed into tablets um, is very important because if it doesn't flow into the tablet machine, um, the uniformity of weight of tablet one to the next will be thrown off and, and will be out of spec. What we wanted to do with this guide is provide a general guidance to get formulators into the right direction of formulation for a certain uh, product that they're working on. We're thinking that those four parameters of drug dosage level, solubility, API, compactability and API uh, flowability are, are really the ones that guide, guide you in the general direction. And then, you know, every compound is different. So, um, it's, it's something to kind of a step-by-step -step guide to get you on the right track. Tony, the, the JRS formulation guide gives good advice 
to the uh, selection of excipients. Can you tell us more about that? Basically, there's a broad range of excipients you can use for solid dosage formulation. And there are wide ranges of particle size distributions. There are wide ranges of moisture levels. There are wide ranges of excipient characteristics from which to choose. Based on the solubility of the API, as I mentioned before, and uh, the dosage level, um, you would select different excipients. So Tony, how can someone get a copy of this guide? Well, that's a good thing. Um, it's funny because uh, we first came out with this written poster size type of guide, and for me the font is a little bit too small, but <laughs> for those younger folks we have this web-based guide now. It's going to be on our website I think within the next month or so, and all you do is you select the parameters just by clicking on each parameter, and what that will do is it'll give you the cases for each of the 18 different configurations of parameters that we have. And with each one of those, it recommends the filler, binder, um, disintegrant, and lubricant that you may use, as well as the process that may work best with that kind of selection. Not only that, at the bottom of the guide, you'll find that there are examples. Um, JRS Pharma, several years back, put out a formulation handbook. In this formulation handbook, there are a number of formulation examples. Those examples kind of embody the selection that you may have made. Tony, thank you so much for your uh, time today and answering all my questions. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. It's been a pleasure for me as well. And for any more information, please just visit jrspharma.com.